you're a you're a paper cutter artist. You do silhouette work, and it's expanded over decades. And just what's how did it all begin? The paper cut. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be careful when you start. You cannot stop after that. So I started by doing. Uh, I wanting to do illustrations, mm -hmm. and then it was not enough to live from. So I expanded to see where else could you live from being an artist mm -hmm. and then it went into making application for public art to show artist books so you started out i i remember seeing you started out doing making these sort of portfolios with your paper cuts and they mm -hmm. that's how you got into artist books and sort of but what made you decide to go straight to portfolios and oh the things? portfolio was just to show my illustration to um, art directors for getting illustrations so it's just so i just made them because i just didn't want to put my thing in a plastic and people say oh you're making artist books and say what is artist books and they say oh you should check the center for book arts and i went there and i was like oh yeah it's interesting and they saw what i was making they said, oh we should um, you know we should go to this next uh, exhibitions and before I knew it I was starting with artist books and then it just expanded from there because when so we're here because you're a part of the Louise Curry art collection and um, it's being moved to St. Francis College and part of that collection as well did Lise meet you when you were just beginning to do portfolios or in artist books, or did she see you sort of like the larger scale work that you had begun with? I was not at that stage, of course, because I know Liz for a long time, and mm -hmm. I, I was trying to think when I met Liz. Like, of course, I can't remember. I know the friend who said, oh, I have a friend who loves art. She would love to see what you're making. And I was already making paper cuts. Mm -hmm. I think I already had large ones. Mm -hmm. but not as large as now and of course um, it was not as developed into uh, the language I have now but it was probably 20 years ago uh, do you ha do you remember the first piece that she collected from you not really I remember the first commission she gave me and it was about our lives I mean our life mm -hmm. but um, I'm not a portrait artist mm -hmm. But I was thinking about how can I put her life that it's relate to all those different stories and facets she had. And then I um, came up with those nine lives of uh, Liz Curry that are nine different pieces about her life. Her life. It's, those were actually the first pieces, when I, when I first met Liz, those, that's the first work I ever saw. Mm -hmm. And I remember going into sort of, you know, her, her gallery, her her mm -hmm. life um, that is there and I connected to it so well and I mean it's ranged from you know so many you know, the villages and these sort of uh, worlds that you create within these has there been any like influence from the people in your lives to create these worlds or is it all just your imagination it's all connected it's difficult it's like a big ball of different leads and mm -hmm wires um, it's uh, it's all connected but it's mostly about visual memories how memories are tied to place to emotions mm. and how you visualize how things are connected and in fact I make extra connections into the stories because mm. sometimes we have different part of our lives different part of our identity or different time and uh, she has part of her life in Canada, part here, but it's all the same life. And in our memory, when we think about something, it's all one thing leads to another. So in my stories, it's, uh, it's also the same visual stories where you think about something and you bring another story, another story. So I would say it's more from imagination, but also from research of real things about, I will ask her about... Uh, photographs or I will have real elements mm -hmm. but then after I, I make the own connections that get as it's in our brain very weird yeah and you really <laughs> and research is like a huge part of all of your works I find the the from the pieces that are about her life and to the other pieces of her collection that she has of yours 
it, there's a lot of history and sort of these minute details that are part of your research project, which is just fantastic. And that sort of relationship that you've developed with Lee's, how, when you've moved forward and, because you've had an amazing career, you're the, you started, you moved here in the 80s and then began mm -hmm. from there. I mean, you're part of so many collections and you've gone all over the world, you've traveled and how much does that relationship for an artist develop or work into your life? Uh, with Liz, now she's a friend. Mm -hmm. so it's not, I cannot separate the collector from the friend. Yeah. Other people, I really know them uh, as collector, but I'm not as close mm -hmm. to them as Liz. So with Liz, it developed over the years, and um, it's, it's a friend first. Mm -hmm. But I'm interested in um, seeing what she's uh, collecting because mm -hmm. I love to see a whole collection and some of uh, the artists I became friend to. So that's an interesting part where it's interacting. So you really enjoy the public art aspect of that's yes. kind of happened because you've gone from paper to steel now. You're mm -hmm. and when, moving from one medium to another, like material-wise. How much did it change how you went about creating your work? Mm, uh, of course, when it's bigger, you have to think more about the structure. Mm -hmm. But paper cutting, it's already a cut panel, so it could be in any material. So you want to be rigid enough to mm -hmm. not flip if it's a, a fence. But it was pretty easy um, to go from 2D to 3D. It's a little more stretch. And I'm uh, trying to expand my visual vocabulary by going into different, and I always try to expand my visionary and uh, imagination vocabulary too. So it's all between the boundaries of uh, what uh, you allow yourself to make or not make. But there is a lot of possibilities, and what I like in public art, it's like this, it's in places that some people, they don't have any art around. You know, yeah. when it's low income uh, so really just building or different subway stations in a not really great uh, neighborhood. And I think it's great to have public art. Yeah, because it, it, reaches, like, it reaches. It reaches yes. to a whole other mm -hmm. audience that, yes. that doesn't always have the opportunity to see art every day. And it's mm -hmm. like, we pass and that there it is. Is there a material that you haven't worked in yet that you want to test out? Or have you. Mm hmm Probably a lot. Um, yes. Um, what's interesting is um, the 3D laser cutting. Really? To cut in uh, volume, so mm -hmm. that I'm interested to explore as techniques. And it's just that, I mean, the whole field of technology is expanding, yes. so there's probably a lot of new opportunities mm -hmm. to, to manipulate Absolutely. how you connect things. That's yeah, amazing. and then the one that gets into your vision you learn, and there is all the other one that no idea exists. <laughs> yeah. And so you so with your public art, you get to sort of test out a lot of these new um, technologies, and with the, the steel cut and 3D laser printing, is there a consideration for um, when the audience kind of views it, are there any sort of compromises that you need to make to get the work there or is there anything that you're like I'm doing this so when somebody sees it it makes an impact or how does that play into the creation? It's all balance. Mm -hmm. I mean public art commission is all about compromising mm -hmm. because it's a different audience so you have to be uh, sensitive to who is going to see it and how they can react and where it is mm -hmm. and that it's safe. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you, you have a lot, a lot of uh, different things and you have a lot of different committees looking at it. So it's all about compromise and finding the best solution for you have um, an, a story to share with the public mm -hmm. and that they can view it in a poetic view and if it's a commuting space that every day they can make another story. So when, because community spaces, so you do a lot, you've done work for the New York subway, mm -hmm. when you created those pieces, how do you uh, get into the mindset of community, like connecting with the people who are going to be passing by your art, or how do I try to put as many entry points as possible in the story, mm -hmm. so in the subway I would have um, 
I'm thinking about where are the people going. You know, I know I'm, it, when you're in the subway, you're ready, you get bored, you want to be there. You don't really want to be stuck in the subway that's, you know, in between stations. Mm -hmm. So your mind is going everywhere where you want to do. And so I'm trying to to thank people, oh yeah, they might go golfing or surfing or going to see their accountant or going for therapy or to a gym. So I'm trying to see all the things that exist around and try to put as many entry points into the story. I really enjoy that. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. Because thank you. The, your public art you do and the work is just so fantastic that I think it connects so much to our message that we have for Lisa's upcoming show, Mirror Mirror. It's just bringing the art to people and art and people to the art, just connecting that all. I think that's really just fantastic. Yeah, I'm very happy to be part of her collection and all about uh, connecting people to art.